Hello, my name is Chris Durgans, and today we are doing a selective reduction experiment using sodium borohydride to reduce the aldehyde group within vanillin acetate. Once we reduce the compound, we will monitor, monitor it via TLC and obtain an IR. Um, along with the IR, we will also analyze the provided NMR spectrum that's on Blackboard. So in this experiment, sodium borohydride is reacted with vanillin acetate, which contains an aromatic ring with an aldehyde, ester, and ether substituents. Since sodium borohydride is a selective reducing agent, it favors the reduction of the aldehyde group over the ester group. All right, now that we have our safety goggles and gloves on, we're going to get up around 100 milligrams of vanillin acetate. I went ahead and put a weigh boat on the scale and teared it. So we're just gonna weigh out around 0 0.1 grams or 100 milligrams of our vanillin acetate. Just a little bit more. We're a little over, but that's all right. We just want to record that final mass. So our final mass is 0 0.120. All right, we're gonna add our vanilla acetate into our test tube here. All right, we're also going to add two mils of 95% ethanol. So I went ahead and measured out two mils and we're just gonna add that to our test tube as well. All right, we're gonna take a glass stir rod and give it a good mixing. Just kind of be gentle, don't break the glass rod or anything. Just kind of mix it the best you can. After you mix it the best you can, you're gonna put it in a ice water bath. We're gonna cool it. Um, some vanillin may crash out, but that is okay. Um, once we, once it's chilled, we're then going to spot it on a TLC plate. Alright. So now we're going to put it in our, ooh, our ice water bath. So let it chill. So that is chilling. We're going to go ahead and like prep our TLC. So you need um, one to one hexane to ethyl acetate mixture, um, which looks like this. Uh, put it into a small beaker. Again, you wanna mark your TLC plate. So we're gonna, remember you have to use pencil, okay? So we'll kind of mark our starting point roughly. So once that is done chilling, we're gonna spot it and try to put it on that line. So we have spotted our villain acetate. That'll be our spot reference. We want to make sure it did develop under the UV light. And as you can see, you can see the spot there. So that's good. Next, we're going to add three mole equivalent of our sodium borohydride relative to the number of moles of vanillin acetate that we added. So remember that our the amount that we added was 0. 120 milligrams of vanilla acetate. I'm going to show on here how to get three moles equivalent and then that's how much sodium borohydride we need. All right, now that we calculated how much sodium borohydride we need, we are now going to weigh it out on our already teared weigh boat.
All right, and that is our mass of our sodium boral hydride. All right, so we're gonna add our sodium boral hydride to our vanilla acetate mixture, and we are going to periodically stir this for around 15 minutes. So stir it about every three to five minutes. All right. While you're waiting um, and stirring this periodically, now is a good time to clean up any glassware or clean up your workstation, fume hood, um, anything that's dirty. I would just start cleaning since you have 15 minutes. All right, we have waited 15 minutes stirring periodically. So now we're gonna take a capillary spotter, um, put it into our solution and spot our TLC and develop it. You're gonna develop this into the fume hood again using one-to-one -one hexane staphyl acetate. Alright, so our TLC plate has developed. We're just going to make sure that we have a different RF value than our first spot. Um, it's just to make sure that we got product. And it looks like it's a totally different spot. It doesn't look like any vanilla and acetate is left. So we are good. We're going to move on to the next step. All right, so now we're going to work up the reaction. We're going to add three mils of water to the solution and extract the organic layer with, and then we're going to extract the organic layer with around three mils of diethyl ether. Uh, remember that diethyl ether is extremely flammable, so do not put near a source of heat. Um, and we're just going to repeat this extraction and we're going to get the ether extractions and wash them with around two mils of water. So we're going to remove the top layer and put it into a 25 ml Erlenmeyer flask. Alright, so now we're adding the diethyl ether. have our extracts we're going to wash with approximately two mils of water um, then we're going to extract the top layer and after that we're going to again wash it with two mils of saturated sodium chloride and again take the top layer and then we're going to dry that with and uh, and hydrosodium sulfate. Our extraction to a test tube because it's better to see. You can see we definitely have two separate layers. And again, we're going to take that top layer. We have our extraction. So now we're going to dry with and hydrosodium sulfate. All right, we have our product. Now we're just going to let it dry. Um, and the result should be a sticky oil. If you do not have a sticky oil, you need to attempt to dissolve the water contaminated product in about two mils of DCM, dry again with anhydrous sodium sulfate and filter off the sulfate and then re-evaporate um, to obtain the sticky oil. 
After that, you're going to obtain an IR and inter interpret the NMR spectrum that's already on Blackboard.